This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, it's Tuesday, which means we're doing a top five list, the top five Tuesday slot. Um, we're talking about Stratocaster tones today. Now, I did a video oh, a little while ago when I was talking about, you know, kind of archetypal, iconic Stratocaster sounds. And, um, you know... You know, the kind of guitar tones you think of that typify what a Stratocaster does, you know, whether it's that sort of quacky, out of phase, position two, position four sound, Knopfler uh, is the obvious example of that, or whether it's the neck pickup um, through a, a an amp on the verge of breakup uh, for that brass knuckle Texas blues Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of tone or the same kind of uh, setting you know neck pick up through a, a pristine clear usually high watt amp with loads of reverb and modulation and delay and stuff a la David Gilmore those are the sounds that we tend to think of as being archetypal Stratocaster tones but there are quite a few players out there who will pick up a Stratocaster and get a completely unique tone out of it that is unlike any other guitarist that uses a Stratocaster. So that's who we're talking about today, beginning with... Hank Marvin. Yes, indeed. Um, Hank B. Marvin. Um, you know, it's... I know what you're thinking. Yeah, his, his is a typical Strat tone, but is it really? You know, can you think of anybody else that picks up a Stratocaster and gets that tone? Um, you know, Fender Stratocaster into a Vox AC30, that's pretty much... Um, uh, Rory Gallagher's rig, isn't it? But he didn't sound like Hank, and neither does Hank sound like him. Uh, but Rory's guitar did sound more like, um, I think, what you would expect of a Strat, whereas Hank just just doesn't. It's 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 a Hank tone rather than a Stratocaster tone. There's a, a story that I read in Guitarist magazine many years ago about um, somebody who was quite senior in the Shadows fan club, who basically managed to sweet talk his way into um, a, a Shadows sound check when they were on tour and um got up on stage and met hank and shook hands and um actually got a, a go of hank's guitar you know pl picked up hank's red stratocaster and played it through hank's uh rig and he still didn't sound like hank so if you're talking about guitarists who you know get a unique tone out of any guitar and in this case a stratocaster then i think you've got to include hank on the list so that's why he's here Next. Richie Blackmore. Yes, indeed. Now, do you remember there was a movie came out um, a few years ago and the basic premise of the movie, I forget what it was called, but basically everybody um, woke up one morning and had completely forgotten, had collective amnesia about the Beatles. Nobody knew the Beatles existed or had existed and, you know, no one knew the music. And there was this young chap who was a struggling uh, singer-songwriter who was, who was the only person in the world who could remember their songs. And he was passing all these old Beatles songs off as as his own work yeah where am i going with this well imagine for a moment if um all of us guitarists woke up tomorrow and had collective amnesia about richie blackmore you know uh nobody kind of knew the name and nobody recognized any of the songs imagine then playing the intro to since you've been gone or smoke on the water and you know saying what guitar is that Honestly, would you, would it scream out that to you that that was a Stratocaster? Would it be obvious? I don't think it would. Um, Richie manages to get a humbucker sound to my ears out of a guitar that isn't, you know, that, that's, that doesn't have humbuckers basically. Um, you know, it's, it's just a completely unique sound and it doesn't sound like your archetypal Stratocaster tone. So this was, um, it was Richie's tone actually that, that made me kind of have the idea for doing this video because it's completely unlike any archetypal, typical, iconic example of what you think of as being a Stratocaster sound. So that's why he had to be on the list. And as I say, it was Richie's sound that made me think of um, putting this video together in the first place so who's next gary miller yes now gary i mean i'm sure many of us associate gary with uh, being a les paul player a particular les paul you know the greeny one the one they got from peter green um but when i first discovered gary he was he was very much a strat guy 
um, I had a a live VHS um, from an Irish tour that he did, and it was a strat all the way through that tour. It was all about the Victims of the Future album uh, phase. And he's getting some of the biggest kind of raunchiest, rockiest guitar tones out of, you know, not this particular Stratocaster, the one that you can see here, but it was like, um, I think it was a vintage white one. Uh, maybe this one was in for repair or something. But this is, when you think of Gary and a Strat, you tend to think of this red one. Um, but going back before that, uh, Victims of the Future era, he he played this guitar on uh, pretty much all of the uh, Corridors of Power album. And you really would not know that is a Strat when you're listening to that album it just doesn't sound like a typical Stratocaster tone which is you know what we're talking about today go on, if you haven't heard the album go and check it out um, there's a fantastic version of the old free song Wishing Well on there and you know other things like you know Don't Take Me For A Loser you know great great big fat um, you know kind of ballsy humbucker sounding tones that he's getting out of a you know, a Stratocaster. So there you go. Go figure. Um, so again, a, a completely unique and non-typical Stratocaster tone. That's why this one had to be on the list. Next. Eric Johnson. Yes. Um, you cannot do a video about uh, unique uh, sounding tones coming out of a Stratocaster without mentioning Eric Johnson. Um the, I remember reading an interview with him around about the time of the release of the Arvaya Music Home album. I think he was being interviewed by Nick Bocott for Guitarist magazine. And uh, I remember, distinctly remember in that interview that Eric said he played Cliffs of Dover, which is, let's face it, is probably his biggest known tune, on um, a 335. But then again, I'm sure we've all seen that clip floating around YouTube of Eric playing the same tune on, I think it was a clip from the Austin City Limits TV show, where he plays uh, the same tune on a Stratocaster and gets an identical tone. So, you know, um, Eric ha just has a tone that's all of his own. You know, it's it, it, I'm sure he could play um, a plastic ukulele from the pound shop and somehow man manage to co coax his, his own signature tone out of it. Um, and it's a mark of the player, really, isn't it, that uh, someone can do that. Um, but yeah, a completely untypical, non-archetypal, non-cliched uh, Stratocaster tone that, you know, without any foreknowledge of what instrument he's playing, you could put on an album and just, you know, put headphones on and not immediately go oh yeah that's a stratocaster again he's bringing um he's getting rather you know something unique and inimitable out of the instrument so that's why he's on the list next jeff beck how can you do any video about um you know f unique stratocaster tones and not mention this chap uh mr beck um again another guy who could pretty much pick up a tennis racket and uh, and get his own unique tone out of it um wh whatever guitar jeff plays he will get a unique tone he will get the jeff beck tone and you know th the instrument he's using is of secondary importance you know when you think about the guitars he's used over the years obviously now he's got his signature model strat uh, but there's also the famous twin humbucker telecaster given to him by seymour duncan you know the telly gib there's that um les paul that you can see him playing on the cover of um the blow by blow album there's uh through throughout the 80s he went through that phase of using you know i think carla or floyd rose equipped um you know super strapped guitars and what were the kramers he was using them i seem to remember one was a a, a lurid pink color and throughout all of these different incarnations he's always sounded like Jeff Beck and always got the Jeff Beck tone out of whatever instrument. That instrument happens to be a Stratocaster these days, but it's not an archetypal, iconic, cliched, typical, whatever you want to call it, uh, Stratocaster tone, the kind of tone that you know you, you associate with um, a, a typical Strat player, like I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So yeah, you cannot talk about unique guitar tones in general, or Strat tones in particular, without mentioning um, this gentleman gentleman here Jeff Beck one of my favorite players of all time and you know there was no way he was not going to make it onto this list so there you go those are my candidates for the top five players who get a, 
a unique and non-typical tone out of a Stratocaster. Let me know if you have any suggestions of, you, of your own, if I've missed anybody. I was going to put Stevie Ray Vaughan on the list, but, you know, Stevie Ray, fantastic player, you know, as was da as is David Gilmore. But, you know, you can tell when you listen to a Stevie Ray Vaughan track that he's playing a Strat. You can tell when you're listening to a, a David Gilmore track that he's playing a Strat. So that's why they, those guys didn't make the cut. No disrespect to them. Um, I love their music, but it wasn't about, they, they didn't fit what this video was about. So as I say, let me know if you have any suggestions, anybody I've missed or anybody on my list that you disagree with. I'm genuinely interested in your thoughts on this. And that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it reasonably entertaining in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream friday 5 p.m uk time you know what happens we drink beer that's the main event and we talk about stuff like guitars and music and whatever else crops up what a great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and thank you so much for watching Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.